nutty putty cave that sounds friendly but this is not a good story. You would think that when you hear the words rescue arrive that you'd be able to heave a sigh of relief. But in the case of John Jones in 2009, sadly that wasn't the case. John Jones and his family loved exploring caves together and decided to do so again on November 24th, 2009 as a way to connect before Thanksgiving. John went off to find the birth canal, a narrow passageway that explorers had to infamously shimmy through with their body. He entered what he thought was the canal but soon got stuck. He was with nine other friends and family members. His brother Josh tried to pull him out but instead John fell even further pinning his arms. He was now trapped 400 feet into the cave, 100 feet below the earth's surface. Rescuers tried everything. They tried everything. But their only hope was a pulley system which eventually failed. After 27 hours, John passed out due to the strain on his heart because he was at a really weird angle. And at just 26 years old with a one year old daughter, John passed away. Number nine, Pocanaga Bay. In Pocanaga Bay, there is a cave that looks welcoming at first with a friendly passageway but soon leads divers 117 feet below trapping many inexperienced divers. Over the years it has led to many lives being lost to its labyrinth of passageways. One of the most disturbing discoveries was a man found 54 meters down in 2002 with a knife lodged in his chest. His diving mask was removed so at first police thought it was a case for murder. The man known as MK had gone diving with his friends so it was plausible that one of them was to blame. But further investigation revealed that MK had actually gotten lost, ran out of air and began drowning. As he swam up, he found a pocket of air, but not enough to sustain him until rescue came. He knew he was going to drown, so instead of drowning, he took his own life. Oh man, like already it's number nine, and it's just the worst. Like it just it gets worse. Like it doesn't get better. Number eight, the Sturkfontein Caves. This event is a reminder that if you are going to take risks, always follow the plan, otherwise it may cost you your life. Peter Verhusel decided to explore the Sturkfontein Caves in South Africa in 1984 with a few of his friends. Despite guidelines, Peter couldn't resist exploring caves off the beaten path. The first couple of times it was alright, but the third time his friends couldn't find him. Peter had gone so far down a passage off the planned path that he eventually got lost with not enough air to return. So if you do that and you don't pack enough air then you're screwed. Fortunately Peter found a small island with a cave which meant that he wouldn't drown, but given that he was short on air he couldn't return meaning he had to wait for rescue. With no food, Peter was trapped in the pitch black darkness. I wish I could say this story had a happy ending, but it took 6 weeks for rescue to find him. Beside his body was a note he left for his wife and mother in the sand, I love you Cheryl and Ma. If you're gonna do that, make sure you pack extra oxygen. Oh my god. Anyways, my dad's a scuba diver. This freaks me out, okay? Number seven, the cave robber spider. I warned you. I did warn you. You wanted it. Here it is. The worst thing ever. Welcome to Most Amazing. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here, rather. The cave robber spider, or troglaraptor, can't tell which is worse there, oh my gosh, is a quick little cave predator that has a fun addition over your standard spider. Yeah, the cave robber has claws on the end of its legs. Yeah, you thought it couldn't get any worse did you? Well, wrong. Here we go. The cave robber spider likes to hang from its web from, you know, atop these pitch black caves. Then when it feels something a little too close for comfort passing down below, it snaps. It snaps its prey's with claws. Like a praying mantis, only in dark caves. And also a spider. I'm gonna be sick. This is horrible. If you live in southwest Oregon, I am so sorry. Please do not explore any caves. Just just stay home. Just stay home. Play Nintendo. That's it. Number six, Kawaii Cave Spider. Hungry for more cave spiders, are we? No sweat. Let's do it. This one does not have eyes. Sans eyes. No eyes. Somehow worse than the last one, right? First discovered in 1971 in, you guessed it, Kauai Island, Hawaii. One of our fans, Alan Bennington Castro, this one's for you living in Hawaii. Yeah. How's the sun? How's the tan? This is what you get for living in paradise. It's referred to as the blind wolf spider, and if your palms are also sweating right now, they're one of the most rare creatures in the world, okay? So only 30 have ever been documented. More than fair. Uh, what's that, 31? Oh. One's missing, that's odd. I think researchers are finding more like out in public. They're just not down to take photos or get close. That's what I believe in, really. Forget that, I would quit in that cave if I saw one of these. Since it's lived in darkness its entire life, it doesn't have eyes. There's no need for them. That's so scary, that's horrible to look at. The spider is considered endangered. That's all thanks to humans splunking and bringing toxic chemicals like nicotine around. Plus we also attract non-native predators every time we leave food in these cave expeditions. So, good on us. These spiders are great hunters, but they're not that great. We gotta stop, leave the caves alone. 
Boom. Number five, the rat snake. Not to be confused with the rattlesnake, that's another horror entirely. The rat snake is found over North and Central America. And it pains me to say this, but they're kind of common. Yeah, there's one type of rat snake though, and this has made its home in the Mexican jungles. And locals refer to this cave as the cave of hanging snakes. Why would you even go in if someone's, oh, what's it called? No problem, not going in. This cave is chock full of bats. So these snakes are talking to one another. They made a little snake heist, a little snake plan, and they decided to hang out in the walls and the ceiling and wait for all these bats to leave the cave or come back in. Yeah, how horrible is that? They dangle by their tails and grab a bat mid-flight. Yeah, I didn't like snakes before this list. Then I saw this. Number four, Preotichthys andruzi. This species of cypronid fish. Okay, of course it lives in complete darkness. Not new. But the wow factor here with this cave fish is that they have evolved to live in complete darkness for over two million years. They've been without eyes for a while, unlike the other fish that I mentioned earlier. They can only be found in Somalia, and it's the first ever animal in history that does not adjust its biological clock with the sun. How cool is that? Its days are around 47 hours long. A fish that can naturally process time and numbers without the sun. That's the coolest thing on our list today. I think that's definitely the coolest. Number three, cave crayfish. And we're back to creepy crawlies. I gave you a break there with the fish again, but sadly there's more happening on the ceilings of these dark caves. Ugh. I'm Canadian, so I've seen crayfish in lakes and all that already. Not a fan. Now we got cave crayfish? Come on, man. The thing with these troglobites is that they have a small amount of food their entire lives. They live in areas without the sun. That's a huge lack of nutrition. That's why they're all so pale. That's why they all look like me in February. Very pale. In turn, this crayfish is quite slow. We love that. Why rush, you know? Take it slow. Chill out, man. In fact, some of these cave crayfish have lived to be 175. Again, they like to take it real slow. Number two cave harvestman. Okay, yeah, don't let the looks fool you. This creepy cave dweller is not a spider. It's an apillion. It's a completely different arachnid. It's actually cousins to daddy long legs. Why don't we call this one daddy cave legs? I don't know. Like commit or don't, you know, but daddy thing's weird with bugs. They're one of the most common when it comes to these dark cave creatures. They're so common that some residents in the States have actually tried and went to court. <laughs> yeah, hear this out. The bone cave harvestman only lives in central Texas. And back in 2014, a nonprofit group filed a petition to have it delisted. So imagine putting on a dress shirt and going to court. Like, oh, do you have jury duty? No, I actually went to go fight the existence of a spider. Sorry, a non-spider. Number one, Sinocalypus. Yeah, we had to save the one that sounds like a Decepticon for last. That's only fair. The Sinocalypus, or Sinocalypus if you're fancy, is one of the coolest creatures I've ever seen. It looks like a shrimp with the head of a much larger ant. Take that back. Instead of cool, Scary, it's a very scary creature. It's a cave dwelling millipede. Ah, here you go folks, nightmares for number one. There you go. Out of the six known species, five of them are often found hiding in limestone caves in Southeast Asia, and they come in many shapes and sizes. But since they live in complete darkness, their legs are even longer than your average millipede. And it's pale, so you won't see it coming, really. Its antenna is also quite long too, so if you feel a little itch on the back of your neck, could be this guy right here. The only good news here is that their eyesight isn't all that dandy, right? But after everything I just said, does that really make a difference, do you think? No, it doesn't. Coming in number 10 now, we have the Hellfire Caves. The name like that, it obviously had to be on the list. These caves in England sprawl for a quarter of a mile underground and were first excavated in the 1700s. The man responsible for the excavation was Francis Dashwood. He was the co-founder of the Hellfire Club, a secret society said to have held meetings in the caves. As the years rolled on, the caves became famous for the group's supposed dark rituals, orgies, and devil worship. The group eventually disbanded, but something seemed to stay behind there. Those who visit the caves say they feel a presence, the ghosts of the members still wandering the dimly lit rooms. Apparitions appear and then disappear in front of people's eyes. Echoes come from nowhere and last for ages, and a deep sense of dread grips people as they go further into the caves. Next up number nine now, we have the Bell Witch Cave. According to legend, in 1804, a farmer called John Bell bought some land in Tennessee for his family to live in. There was a cave on the property which locals claimed was haunted by a woman called Kate Batts who felt she was cheated by the Bell family in the land purchase. By 1817, strange sightings had started happening of animals and apparitions. The family would hear knocking on their door and dragging along the walls outside of the house. When they went to investigate, there was always nothing there. They began to hear choking and growling noises. Their youngest daughter was scratched by unseen forces. She had her hair pulled and was beaten to a pulp. 
Once the family were driven out, the hauntings seemed to stop. Locals say the Bell Witch returned to her cave, where she still remains to this day. Visitors can take a tour, but it is not for the faint-hearted. Moving on to number eight now, we have the Cave of Sibyl. The ancient Greeks, like many cultures around the world, believed there were certain portals on Earth to the underworld and that naturally they should be avoided. To them, the Cave of Sibyl was one of them. It's located in the ancient Greek settlement of Cume, near what is now modern day Naples. According to legend, even birds won't fly over the cave for fear of being pulled into the underworld. Locals say the 700 year old Oracle of the Dead called Priestess Sibyl guards the gateway and acts as a sort of guide for people on their descent towards Hades. She won't take you to the underworld if you avoid the cave, but if you step inside, some say you're as good as dead. Number 7. Dion Dreyer in 1994, a man named Dion Dreyer was lost 270 meters in Bushman's Hole in South Africa, and for 10 years, no one was able to get to him. But Dave Shaw, an experienced diver, was determined to do just that, retrieve his body so that he could be put to rest by his family. Shaw had set a number of diving records and was the only one to find Dreyer's body 207 meters down, covered in silt. Unable to retrieve it the first time, he promised to return. It was Shaw's 333rd dive in his life when he went back, but at those depths, any intense struggle could lead to a diver passing out. If a diver starts to inhale too quickly, something called hypercapnia can happen, which is when too much carbon dioxide fills the bloodstream and it can disorient you, you don't know which way is up anymore. While Dave was trying to cover the body with a body bag, the skeleton began to float, something he didn't account for. Catching it became a vicious struggle and being an experienced diver, he knew better than to keep trying. But as he began his ascent to try again later, his his light got snagged on the cave line. He was already disoriented from the earlier exertion and began to panic, and Dave eventually passed out and died next to Dreyer. But later, their bodies floated to the surface, making it possible for divers to retrieve them both. So in a way, he did make good on his word, but even as an experienced diver, things still went wrong. So prepare yourselves. Always. Number six, Floyd Collins and the Crystal Caves. The title makes it sound like it's some kind of mystical adventure, and for Floyd Collins, it was, until very suddenly it wasn't. Floyd found the cave in 1917 and became so enthralled he wanted to explore every inch of it. Floyd spent close to a decade trekking through every narrow passageway, besting them all. That is, until one day he went an inch too far. Lantern in hand, he was trying to make it out before he lost light. While climbing his way up a passageway, Floyd Floyd bumped a 12 kilogram rock loose. In 127 hour style, the rock crushed his ankle and trapped him inside. Rescue team spent 17 days trying to save him, and Collins became a celebrity with people even setting up booths to sell food and drinks and souvenirs, all in preparation for his rescue. They tried everything and decided to resort to mining a new path, but sadly, that took too long. Even though they gave him water and food, after fighting so long and so hard, Floyd passed away in the cave due to hypothermia. Number 5. The Mostel Cavern Disaster The Mostel Cavern Disaster In 1967, John Ogden was with five adventurers prepared to take on a two mile deep, uncharted part of England's Mostel Caverns. While they were already hours deep into their trek, it started raining. A lot. A full on flood overwhelmed the entrance to the cave, sealing off any chance they had of escaping. Water poured in every direction, and soon a stampede of rushing water swept past them. As the water rose, Ogden was the only one able to reach a small crack of air in the rocks ahead. Ugh, so sad. There was only room for one and the rest of his team perished in the waters below. You can only imagine the absolute terror he must have felt alone and trapped in a narrow crevice. Still, he survived as long as possible, but by the time they found him, he too had died. Number four, the Plura Caves. So by now, right? We know that splunking in caves in general can be terrifying, but add scuba gear and it's a whole other level of craziness. A group of experienced divers decided to enter Norway's Plura Cave in February 2014, and they would be some of the last to do so. The pond that led to the cave had frozen, so they cut a hole in the ice before diving in. The plan was to swim to the other side, but one of the scuba divers named Jari had gotten halfway before he gotten stuck in a narrow passage. He panicked, and in order to prevent hypercapnia, 
his friend Patrick handed him a cylinder to limit the carbon dioxide in his system. To his horror as he tried to switch, Jari helplessly swallowed water and died. Patrick had to stay calm otherwise the same fate would meet him and therefore had to abandon his friends body and keep going. Another man named Kai was behind him with another man named Jari who also ran into some trouble. Jari upon seeing the body panicked and sadly fell to the same fate despite Kai coming to his aid. As Kai was the last diver the exit was now blocked and he had to trek back the way he came. He emerged 11 hours later and it wasn't until 2 months later that the bodies could be retrieved secretly by the same men who left them because they closed the Plura Cave. The Plura Cave is now closed to even the most experienced divers. No one is allowed. Alright guys we are coming up to our top 3 and if you like this video and want to see more like it you know what to do. Press that button. Tell us you like us. Subscribe for more. It makes us happy and then we like making you happy. So. Number 3 The Cave Creek Disaster In 1995, 17 students were visiting New Zealand's Cave Creek and everything was supposed to be fine. They had a guide. The weather was fine. They weren't exploring narrow crevices underwater. The path was designed for tourists like them. But then, a couple of students noticed a flimsy looking platform. As teenagers are wanted to do, they made fun of it assuming that it was stronger than it looked so they jumped on it. But the builders had made a deadly mistake. They had used nails instead of bolts to secure it in place and had no engineering background. The platform gave way and the students plummeted 130 feet onto rocks. One survived by gripping a handrail all the way down but out of the 17 only 4 survived. Number 2 Paninkin Plains Cave Mixing in some happier endings in our top 10 list we have the story of Andrew White and his team. In 1988 Andrew was with a team of 15 people excited to explore one of the deepest caves in the world. World. A rare cyclonic storm had other plans for the group when it caused the middle section of the entire cave to collapse. They were trapped underground and couldn't go back the way they came. They hung tightly next to a small ledge and the roof above them looked as though it was about to collapse. Andrew took on the courageous task of swimming through the water to find a way out. It took the team over 24 hours to be let out and thankfully they all survived! Yeah, like the first story we have where they all survived. Luckily, Andrew recorded the whole thing and ended up releasing an award winning documentary called Nullabor Dreaming. Despite surviving this experience, though, Andrew passed away in a helicopter crash in 2012 in New South Wales. Last but not least, Nam Talu Cave Flood. Rule number one of risk taking on vacation if the locals warn against it, listen to them. This last story is truly heartbreaking and a solemn reminder to any who do not heed warnings. In October 2007, Helena Carroll, her fiance John Cullen, a Swiss family with two girls, plus another family with a young boy and two guides, decided to trek the Nam Talu Cave. The problem the problem was it was monsoon season and locals warned them not to attempt it. Halfway into the cave they heard a roar behind them and you can guess what happened. A freak flood swept both families and the guides away but John saved Helena by pulling her up on the ledge. Consumed by the idea that they might die there, John decided to brave the water to try and get help, leaving Helena all alone. She hung there for 8 hours until help finally came. When she exited the cave, she made the grim discovery that she was the only one who'd survived and she lost the love of her life. Starting us off with number 10 is the Altamira cave paintings. These cave paintings are located near Santillana del Mar which is in the northern part of Spain. Funnily enough the paintings were discovered by accident by a hunter named Modesto Cubias in 1868 but weren't giving much mind until 1879. These paintings shocked everyone and I mean everyone. Why? Because it was so well preserved specialists seriously doubted their authenticity. The paintings were done around 35,600 years years ago yet their colours and details were so vibrant it was quite suspicious. It was only at the start of the 20th century that they were accepted as authentic. These paintings are single handedly the biggest pieces of evidence of Magdalenian culture and most depict charcoal and ochre, 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 let me know if that's how you say it, pictures of horses, handprints and bisons. They were so impressive that Picasso himself said after Altamira all is decadence. I mean that's a, that's pretty heavy words from Picasso himself. Coming in at number 9 are the aliens. These pictographs were found in the Wanamura Gorge in Australia, again my apologies if I said that wrong. These paintings date back to approximately 3000 BC and they depict the aboriginal one genus, I hope I said that right as well, I probably didn't, I'm sorry, which is a type of religious deity or supreme spirit that were the creators of land and people. But the way they've depicted them is just super weird, they literally look like white versions of the alien emojis on our phone. 
bones. White faces with no mouth and large black holes for eyes and they also have this sort of halo around them. The other black figures drawn amongst them look like what can only be described as closely resembling Dementors from Harry Potter. Some interpretations of these paintings say that extraterrestrial beings visited Earth tens of thousands of years ago and had direct contact with these people. Some aboriginals believe that they even played a role in creation which could explain why they drew the Wanginas looking like aliens. At number 8 we have the Chauvet Cave. This one is located in the south of France and only really gained notoriety in 1994 after three speleologists discovered its walls were covered in paleolithic artwork and that it also contained the fossilized remains of various animals, many of which had become extinct by then. So that's a lot of useful scientific and historical knowledge in that cave already and we haven't even specifically talked about the art yet. The cave shocked people for many reasons, it was ridiculously large and the quantity and quality of the artwork found was quote unquote spectacular. It's literally been named a cave that has some of the best preserved figurative cave paintings in the world, which is insane since most of the art there is 30 to 32,000 years old. The paintings had animals in there that had never appeared in previous Ice Age paintings as well as many other animals that had. Surprisingly it had no paintings of full human figures, just one figure that seemed to be a vulva attached to an unfinished pair of legs. As of now it's one of the most significant prehistoric art sites on earth and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Next we have Peter Verhulsel. Peter was exploring the Sterkfontein Caves in South Africa with some friends in 1984. He had veered off the line strung through the cave which was used to help them find their way back out. Scuba divers were sent in to try and locate him but days then weeks went by before his body was finally discovered at which point it was too late. Peter was unable to find his way back to his friends but had managed to find a small underground beach where he pulled himself out of the water. It was pitch black in there and his oxygen tank was just about depleted so he was completely trapped. In this multi week long search rescue teams would have been within 36 meters of him but Peter didn't hear them and the rescuers believed that he had drowned. When Peter was finally found six weeks after having gone missing, it was determined that he had died of starvation. Floyd Collins. Floyd Collins met his unfortunate fate in Crystal Cave in Kentucky, a cave which he had actually discovered and had been mapping out and exploring for eight whole years. On January 30th, 1925, while exploring the cave, Collins became trapped in a narrow passage about 150 feet away from the entrance. He had been working on creating an entrance to a grotto he had discovered down there when his gas lamp started to dim. Now he was in a rush to make his way back out of the cave and he accidentally knocked over his lamp igniting it completely or opposite of igniting it he put it out completely and his foot landed on an unstable part of the wall. Rocks started to shift and one of them fell from the ceiling pinning his leg. A rescue effort was of course launched but Floyd was deep in the cave in the difficult conditions made a rescue kind of tough to execute. Despite the attempts of rescuers, Collins remained trapped for over two weeks. Tragically, on February 13th, Collins finally died of exposure, hunger, possibly hypothermia. This was most likely the day he died, but his body wasn't actually retrieved until the 16th. Next up is the Nam Talu Cave Incident. In 2007, Helena Carroll and her fiance John Cullen were exploring Nam Tulu Cave in Thailand along with seven other tourists. Things took a turn for the worse though when a flash flood broke out. This giant wave gushed into the cave and swept away everyone except for Helena and John who just started climbing in order to escape this rising water. They reached a ledge and debated what they were going to do next. John ultimately decided he was going to attempt to swim to safety and send back help. He did not survive and Carol was found and rescued hours later. She was the only survivor. Number four we have what I like to call a close call. This was a story posted to reddit by a now deleted user but the story goes that they were exploring a cave with their family. As they were making their way out they discovered a narrow opening in the rock about knee high. By lying on their stomachs and squeezing through the tight space, they entered a small crawl space within the rock. The ceiling of this space was adorned with beautiful quartz crystals. Moving in one by one, the group stared up at this beautiful sight before them. The space was so tight though that they could feel the ceiling against their backs 
and the floor against their stomachs with each breath. They continued deeper though until the path led to an area covered in sediment formations like stalagmites and stalactites. Everyone thought this was pretty cool, but they began to feel water trickling onto their backs. They realized that it was raining outside and the crawl space had a downward slope that would quickly fill with rainwater. The only way to escape was way back they'd come in and what started as a small trickle of water pretty quickly grew into streams and the water began to accumulate. They rushed to exit, crawling out one by one, but the water was flooding in faster than they could escape and the user who was furthest from the exit was trying very hard not to panic. They had the worst time here, crawling on their stomach with sharp crystals hanging from the ceiling again and they struggled to keep up. The water level rose rapidly, splashing against them as they crawled and just in time though they managed to crawl out as the water had reached their lips at this point and everyone managed to get out safely. Ugh, I feel uncomfortable just reading that. Number three we have the catacombs video. Now while the Paris catacombs isn't technically a cave it is cavernous and dark and incredibly easy to get lost in. This is one of the most infamous pieces of found footage on the internet as we still don't know who this person was. If you somehow have not heard about this this case before, it's a POV video of a person exploring the catacombs. The camera with the footage was found later on by a group of explorers. Most of the video is pretty mundane until you start to notice that the person behind the camera seems to be getting increasingly more distressed. He starts to pick up his pace, pointing the camera around in a frantic manner as if realizing he's lost and is starting to panic. Then he's in a full on run. The video ends with the cameraman finally dropping the camera and just running deeper into the shadowy depths of the maze of catacombs as the camera continues to film before finally running out of battery. John Edward Jones. In 2009, John Edward Jones went missing in Nutty Putty Cave, Utah. John was exploring the cave with his brother when he got stuck upside down in an uncharted narrow passage which he had mistaken for a section called the Birth Canal Passageway. Despite efforts to free him, John remained trapped in the tight space. Rescuers worked tirelessly to try and retrieve him, but in the end, they were unable to save his life. The challenging conditions of the cave made it extremely difficult. The passage was only about 10 inches wide in some places, and it was positioned at a steep angle. The rescue operation involved uh, pulleys, ropes, and other equipment to try and free John. They even brought in specialized teams from around the country to help, but unfortunately, after nearly 28 hours of being trapped in this upside down, compressed position, John suffered cardiac arrest. Because of the dangerous conditions and the risk to the rescuers, it was decided the best course of action was to just close off the entrance to the cave, sealing it with concrete to prevent further access. And finally, we have the rescue. I thought I'd finish off the video with an uplifting story for once. Let's leave uh, things on a good note. Uploaded in 2016 to the YouTube channel Exploring with Josh, the group of friends were exploring Ape Cave in Mount St. Helens, Oregon, when they made a pretty shocking discovery. At the start of the trek, the cave is very spacious, but pretty soon the group were on their hands and knees as they had moved further and further into the cave. It was becoming increasingly more low and narrow, and one of the guys suggested they just turn back, saying, I don't think this is worth it, man. I don't think we're meant to crawl this far, but they continued on, and it's lucky that they did because they came across a young girl who had got lost in the cave somehow. She didn't have anything on her, no light, nothing, but she'd managed to crawl in that far. The boys were able to bring her back to safety where she was reunited with her parents. Luckily, she hadn't been in there very long. If they hadn't decided to explore the cave that day, who knows if she ever would have been found. At number 10, we have the Devil's Hole. I mean, the name speaks for itself. It's as easy to stay away from a cave with a name like like this. This place has a distinction of being known as the most haunted place in western New York, and it's for a good reason. According to the native folklore, the Iroquois said that a demonic serpent named Evil One 
lived inside of the cave. People who would go inside of it will either never come out again or they will come out with their hair turned white. But things get worse as we go back in time to the Devil's Hole Massacre of 1763. A group of warriors used the Devil's Hole to attack soldiers. It was a complete bloodbath and 81 British soldiers were killed and their bodies were thrown into the cave to rot and decompose. The Hellfire Caves takes us to number 9. So if you're not into claustrophobia, labyrinths, or dangerous places, then you're going to want to stay far away from the Hellfire Caves. A team of paranormal investigators traveled through the long winding tunnels in an attempt to conjure up spirits. This cave is home to catacombs that lie about 300 feet below the surface. The old Hellfire Club used to hold meetings that consist of pagan worship and human sacrifices. Supposedly there are a ton of evil ghosts that linger within these caves, but if that doesn't scare you, it's for sure scaring me, maybe a half a mile of tunnels underground will do the trick. Because you never know, maybe you'll get lost and you'll never see the surface ever again. Gomentong Cave in Malaysia brings us to number 8. This next cave seems like it came straight out of a horror movie. The Gomentong Cave is the home to millions of bats. And if that doesn't freak you out, maybe the millions of cockroaches that feast on anything alive will do the trick. Animals that accidentally fall into this scary cave will be quickly devoured by these cockroaches. Approaches. Okay, and then we have the cherry on top. This place also has enormous cockroach eating centipedes that scurry along the cave walls. So don't ever go inside of this cave without wearing one of those sealed up bodysuits, or better yet, don't ever venture inside of it at all. Filling our number seven slot is Las Gia, Las Gia, Las Gol. There were so many types of pronunciations, I really don't know which one's right. Please don't slate me in the comments. <laughs> These are the cave formations found in the rural parts of Hargeisa in Somaliland. Even though the cave was known to locals of that area for ages, the caves only gained international attention in 2002 when an archaeological survey was undertaken by French researchers and they were shocked to find this cave undocumented. The cave contains very vivid paintings which are some of the earliest known cave paintings in the Horn of Africa. The rock art was created between 9000 and 3000 BC and it's so well preserved till this day because of the granite overhangs. The artwork features cattle in ceremonial robes with humans and the necks of the cattle are embellished with plastron, which is basically the flat part of a turtle shell. I didn't know that either, but now you do as well. And they also include other animals like dogs and giraffes. The colours on these paintings are so vivid, I would believe if someone told me they literally painted them a month ago rather than thousands of years ago. Now at number 6 are the psychedelics. Tassili Najar is a national park located in southeast Algeria. And of course, these caves also became part of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites list in 1982. Most of the art in their dates back 12,000 years and there are more engravings than there are paintings. There are 15,000 engravings in the cave and they consist of mostly large animals like crocodiles and antelopes and it even has humans dancing and hunting. But they also include something called fungoid rock art. Back in 1989, psychedelics researcher Giorgio Samarini claimed that the paintings that look like fungoids were proof that people inhabiting the Sahara Desert had taken psychedelics. There's one bit of artwork that depicts various figures in a line dressed as dancers surrounded by festoons. And each dancer has a mushroom like object in their hand with lines coming out of the mushroom and connecting to the dancer's head. Now it's obviously open to interpretation on what the picture means but I think you can see why Giorgio took away from it what he did. And believe it or not, psychedelics aside, the caves also house alien depictions. Flying saucer like figures in the sky and people that look like humans but have one eye and just have very alien like features. The picture Pictures are quite creepy, I'm not gonna lie, but these caves seem to just have it all. Coming in at number 5 is the prehistoric Sistine Chapel. Yes, I'm not kidding you, that's what some people have nicknamed the Lascaux Caves. Located in the southwestern part of France, there are a lot of caves in France on this list, I just realised. The caves have in them more than 600 paintings, mostly of big mammals in the area, humans and abstract signs. The art inside the cave is meticulously split into those three categories. The paintings were the product of a huge combined effort 
effort spanning many generations, the earliest painting was done 17,000 years ago. However, there's one painting called the crossed bison that grabbed everyone's attention. The crossed hind legs of the animal create the illusion that one bison is closer to the viewer than the other. The fact that Paleolithic cave painters had that skill and primitive form of perspective is evidence that they were advanced for their time. And funnily enough, the entrance of the cave was found by an 18 year old walking his dog and his dog fell into a hole which ended up being the tunnel. The boy came back with three friends thinking the tunnel was an entrance into the Lascaux Manor but then they found the paintings. By 1995 the cave had 1,200 daily visitors but that created a preservation problem because lichens and crystals began to develop and on top of that they started having a huge fungus problem as well so they've convened many times to see how they can preserve the cave. At number 4 are the x-ray paintings. The Kakadu National Park is a protected area in the northern part of Australia and the place is massive, I'm talking the size of the country Slovenia massive. It's also home to one of the earth's biggest concentrations of rock artwork. Some are nearly 20,000 years old and they provide an insight into aboriginal life like nothing else has before. The park has two main galleries, Burungku, Burungkai and Uber, Uber, I really I'm sorry if I pronounce those wrong, I know I did, I'm sorry. For these people the act of painting was more important than the painting itself and so they cover all the paintings with the newer ones. The art shows the objects they use every day, the things they do and the animals they hunt. Some paintings can only be done by the person with the right knowledge, so someone who had no magic knowledge could not do a sorcery painting for example. They would paint animals in order to place them in touch with the spirit of that animal which would hopefully ensure them a successful hunt. But the painters didn't just draw the animals, they drew their organs and their bones as well which is the first time discoverers had found depictions like that and hence they were called x-ray paintings. Filling our number 3 slot are the underwater paintings. This one's about the Kosky cave located near Masai, France. The cave was discovered by a man named Henry Kosky back in 1985 but the public only found out about it 6 years later when 3 divers actually got lost and died in the cave. But if you wanted to find the cave today you would just have to go through a 175 meter long tunnel which is all well and good except the entrance to that is 37 meters under sea level. That puts a bit of a spanner in the works I think. Sadly 4 fifths of the cave's art was permanently submerged underwater and hence destroyed but 150 pieces of cave art are still intact. Art like hand stencils date back to 27,000 years BP and the newer art of different animals and signs dates back to 19,000 years BP. People were stunned at the fact the art was a underwater and b it was partially intact. In circumstances like that the art would usually be lost so it was miraculous that it hadn't been and that's why it deserves the number 3 slot I think. You guys can disagree. Now at number 2 are the Magura cave paintings. This cave is located in the northwest region of Bulgaria. All the paintings were done from bat poo and are done on stone. This is probably the most extensive series of cave paintings ever found and they actually cover a range of epics. The Neolithic, some other ones that I can't pronounce so I'm not going to try and even the start of the early bronze age. There are more than 700 drawings in the cave and they fall into 4 groups. Zoomorphic, symbolic, anthropomorphic and geo geometric figures. The figures are mostly stick figures and not extremely detailed but it's very easy to grasp what they're trying to depict. The cave was formed nearly 15 million years ago and you'd have to walk a good 1.6 miles to cover the whole thing. It has one main gallery that includes 6 halls and the largest one being the arc hall that's 69 feet high and 420 feet long. This cave is filled with quote unquote art and is bigger than nearly all art galleries in the world. No wonder people were shook, I would be too. And finally at number 1 is the Cave of Hands, also known as Cueva de las Manos. These caves are located in Argentina and are insanely famous for the numerous, numerous hands painted inside the caves. The art dates back to 13,000 to 9,000 years ago and obviously a lot of different groups of people occupied the caves during that time. I mean some of the earliest artwork has been carbon dated to 7,300 BC. All the hands inside the cave are stenciled and most of them are left hands, indicating that the people probably used their right hand to hold the spring pipe or they sprayed the back of their right hand with their left. It made sense, trust me. Either way, the cave was filled with hands. There was also artwork of full human beings, geometric shapes, hunting scenes, etc. They used mineral pigments to make the images like iron oxides to get the reds and purples, manganese oxide to make black and so on. The site became a UNESCO World Heritage Site back in 1999 and people were glad. It's not every day you stumble upon a cave that's filled with sprayed hands dating to 7300 BC. 
just thinking about how much history took place in that cave and all the different people those hands could have belonged to and what their lives would have been like, I mean it just blows my mind, it really does. And we're starting off this list with Kenny Veach. Kenny Veach was an experienced hiker and explorer who went missing in 2014 while searching for a peculiar cave in the Nevada desert. Kenny shared in a YouTube comment that he had encountered a mysterious M-shaped cave near the Nellis Air Force Base around Area 51, which had apparently caused his body to vibrate. Encouraged by other commenters, he filmed his exploration of the cave and uploaded it to his YouTube channel, Snakebite McGee, titling it M Cave Hike. Unfortunately though, on his third attempt to reach the cave, a few months later, he vanished without a trace. His cell phone was discovered near the entrance of an old mine shaft, yet his whereabouts are still unknown. It's, it's possible he got lost or had an accident, but the cave's proximity to Area 51 and Kenny's claims of odd vibrations led to a lot of online rumors and theories. Some speculated he might have stumbled upon significant information related to extraterrestrials or government secrets, and that his pursuit was intentionally disrupted. Despite extensive searches though, there's still no solid evidence or leads as to where he is. Next we have Ben McDaniel. Ben McDaniel disappeared in August of 2010 while exploring Vortex Spring in Florida. He dove down to explore an underwater cave roughly 58 feet below the surface. He resurfaced. It was totally fine. He refilled his tanks in preparation for a second dive later in the evening. But this time, he never returned. His truck was left behind at a dive shop. Inside it were his wallet, a cell phone, and a map of the cave. There were also two oxygen tanks found near the entrance of the cave. And the two divers who discovered them found it odd that there was just air in the tanks rather than having a mix of gas, which is typically the case when deep diving. The cave is known for being uh, tricky to navigate with tight spaces and poor visibility and despite a thorough search by experienced divers, he was never found. Some think he might have run into problems, maybe he got stuck or had issues with his gear, but no one knows for sure. And some even suggest he purposely disappeared or maybe faked his own vanishing, which is quite the reach. But there's still no concrete answers till this day. Next on the list is Michael Leland Vincent. Vincent went missing in Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky on May 5th. 2011. At the time, he was on parole and he had just set fire to his house, which he shared with his mother and aunt. Some speculated that he had attempted to burn down his house in order to fake his own death so that he could escape the consequences of his charges. Some say he may have taken his own life, but, but no body has ever been discovered. He lived very close to Mammoth Cave though, which is huge. In fact, it's the largest known cave system in the world. So if he did go missing in that cave, it's likely he'll never be found. Moving on to number seven now, we have the Well of Sacrifice. This one is located a short walk from the main city of Chichen Itza. Many tourists visit that ancient pyramid site, but not as many people go to the Well of Sacrifice nearby. How do I know? Well, I was one of them. I went to Chichen Itza the other year, but I didn't know that this was just around the corner. Perhaps that's for the best though. The Well of Sacrifice is a limestone sinkhole cave. In 1904, an American explorer dredged it to collect pieces of gold, copper, and pottery from the water below. He was amazed to find just how old and far flown the artifacts were. However, the dredging also uncovered a very dark Mayan secret. He found bodies, lots of them. The cave contained the remains of at least 120 adults and many children. The bones seemed to suggest that the victims had been flayed. The findings seemed to fit with the ancient stories of Mayans pushing people into the hole while they were still alive. The 65 foot fall into the water probably wouldn't have killed them, which meant they drowned while trying to use their broken limbs to stay afloat. What a horrible thought. Next up at number six now, we have the Chislehurst Caves. This vast complex in England contains some 22 miles of passageway split into three distinct sections named Saxon, Druid, and Roman. They later join up through other connecting passages. People have mined the caves there for thousands of years, but the earliest written record comes from around 1250. In more modern times, the mines were home to people escaping the bombing of London during the Second World War. The history, turmoil, and darkness of these stony hallways seems to have 
intertwined and left a very dark energy behind. People regularly report hearing screams, murmurs, children giggling and footsteps echoing from deep within the labyrinth. Locals say it's the ghosts of those who died there and want to let the living know of their eternal horror. Moving on to number five now, we have the Moaning Cavern. These caves are found in Velocito, California, and when people say they moan, they aren't kidding. Areas whip through the caverns, creating this sort of strange moaning sound throughout them. That's the official explanation anyway. Locals have a different story. They say it's down to the Tommy Knockers, strange, mythical leprechaun-like creatures. Some believe they are the spirits of those who have died in the caves over the years. Why are these Tommy Knockers there? Well, opinion is the divided on that too. Some say the creatures are warning cavers of potential collapses. Others say they are actually evil spirits who cause those collapses which kill people. Either way, many people avoid the caves because they don't want to take the risk of finding out which way they will go. Coming at number four now, we have Robber's Cave. This one is located in Nebraska and has long been known as a sacred meeting spot for the Pawnee Indians. The cave system lies directly below an area where the tribe used to carry out traditional practices such as healing, animal spirit powers, and medicinal work. Some say the deep connection they made with the earth there has had a lasting impact on the land. Long after the area was abandoned, locals claim they still hear the sounds of beating drums and chanting as if the rituals are being performed by the ghosts there. They also say that from the outside, you can hear screams and moans coming from the caves. Moving on to number three now, we have the Mammoth Cave. This one really creeped me out for a number of different reasons. Firstly, it's huge. This Kentucky cave is said to contain 400 miles of explored area, and that's only the parts we know of. Experts say there could be a lot more we haven't seen yet. Archaeological evidence seems to suggest that Native Americans were mining the cave as far back as 4,000 years ago. They did this very successfully, using the materials to make tools and weapons. At one point, they even began burying their dead there. Things continue like this for another 2,000 years, but then, for some reason, they abandoned the cave and never returned. All evidence suggests they just left the cave and never went back again. What was the reason for this? Did they find something horrific in the depths of the cave system, or did something find them? The only way to find out is to keep exploring it. Any volunteers? Next up at number two now, we have the Washaba Street Caves. This one is quite unique in a number of ways. Firstly, it looks like a normal building from the outside, located in St. Paul, Minnesota. It was built into sandstone caves along the Mississippi River, so that locals could mine silica. Over the years, though, it was overrun by gangsters who used the caves as a base of operations. According to legend, these gangsters were gunned down in the caves in the early 1930s. The brutality of their deaths left restless spirits behind in the caves. The ghostly sightings of them have continued to this day. Some even say the ghosts have begun to wander out of the caves and into the cafe next door, giving people the fright of their lives. Staff and customers have reported seeing the apparitions of a woman sitting at the bar with a man in a Panama hat. Many people would want to avoid seeing such a sight, but if you do, they have a cave tour there for just $8. Not bad. And finally number one now, we have the Devil's Hole. This is a very famous creepy cave that lies near Niagara Falls. The 20 foot deep cave was first talked about by the Native Americans of the area. They said the cave was the home of a demon-like snake called the Evil One. He is said to embody everything evil in the world. Some of the tribe who entered never came out. Others returned with their hair turned from black to solid white in pure terror from their encounter. They couldn't even describe what they had seen because they'd lost their minds inside the cave. They tried to warn the early French explorers of the evil inside, but they didn't listen. One of them went inside and was murdered shortly after by his own men. In 1763, a conflict occurred between the British and the Native Americans there. The result was 80 British soldiers being scalped and thrown into the cave along with their horses. Although it's been many years since these events, people say you can still feel the evil presence by simply walking past the entrance to the cave. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Texas Blind Salamander. Three red flags, right in the name alone. Texas, blind, and salamander. They say everything is bigger in Texas. Please don't let that be true for this creepy crawly, please. Unless you live around the Edwards Plateau in Texas, you don't have to worry about these guys while you're spelunking. The Texas blind salamander can only be found in the deep cave systems, and you'll know when you see it. It kind of looks like one of Khaleesi's dragons from Game of Thrones. It's got red gills on the back of their pale heads, and like many others on this list, it is adapted completely to the dark. These salamanders lost their vision, but it's totally fine 
fine. It's chill. They don't need eyes. They move their head around slowly and they sense changes in water pressure. That's just the start too. How horrible. Let's do it. Number nine. Blind cavefish. So a lot of these creatures, if not all of them, they're they're blind. Spoiler alert, that's the fun beauty of this list. All these creatures live in pure darkness their entire lives, so they need to find other ways to hunt. Some of them sense water pressure changes, but when it comes to the Mexican tetra, aka the blind cavefish, they don't even need eyes at all. Not even for show. Awesome, this is horrifying. They were discovered originally in 1936 in Sierra de Abra, Mexico. If you thought your high school had clicks, you're not ready for the blind cavefish. Since they don't have eyes at all, cavefish rely purely on sonar clicks in order to stay in their respective schools. Yeah, not a bad click pun there, right? You guys are like, wait, why was he? Oh, I get it. Some of these fish will eventually see light and that's not bizarre, but when that happens, they slowly develop eyes and vision. How insane is that? That's only if they're near surface rivers. Imagine just growing eyes and then seeing light. What a Wednesday that ought to be. Number eight. The Olm. Okay, I'll give you one more before we get into the gross spiders. The Olm, our number eight today is, dare I say it, he's a little cute. He's kind of cute. I want to rub his little head. I don't know how laws work here uh, at all. I just see a fish and I'm like, I hope it's not National Geographic, if that helps. I mean, the lack of eyes here is a little jarring, sure, but the Olm compared to the rest of this list, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. The Olm was the first ever troglobite to be discovered, meaning the first ever creature that lives purely in a dark cave. And given the fact that it's pale, eyeless, and it looks like a dragon, Croatia folk back in the 18th century, they thought that they were looking at a literal dragon for a hot minute. Yeah, more than fair, more than fair. I have unlimited resources online right now, and even so, 30% of me thinks that's a dragon, for sure. It could probably breathe fire, right? If you see this little guy, don't try and slay it. Leave it alone. Water pollution has made the Ulm a vulnerable species. We just did a list on extinct animals we're trying to bring back to life. Let's also preserve the blind dragons while we're at it, okay? Cheers. Hit that thumbs up for blind amphibians. Number seven takes us to Noval Cave in Romania. This place is also known as the Poison Caves because it is rich in hydrogen, sulfide, and carbon dioxide, but low in oxygen. But despite this, creatures are living in the cave and they have been separated from the outside world for the past 5.5 million years. Inside of this dark cave, there are spiders, scorpions, wood lice, and centipedes crawling along the walls, and many of them haven't even been seen by humans. So who knows what else is lurking inside the shadows? The Cave of Sybil descends onto our list at number six. There are some pretty creepy natural formations around the world where people think that these are entrances or even gateways into hell. One of the oldest known entrances to the underworld is this cave right here. Apparently it is so sinister and fueled by negative energy that birds won't even fly over it. They know better. According to the legend, the dead priestess Sybil guards this gateway and lures travelers into the fiery pit of hell. Well, you know what? I'm not willing to see if this legend is true or not. So you know what? I'm just gonna keep my distance away from this one. Mammoth Cave in Kentucky takes our number five spot. So this is the largest haunted cave in America. So yeah, you're gonna wanna keep your distance from this place, and that's because it has a very dark past. There are over 150 documented paranormal events that have happened here, so that's why people are so fascinated with the cave's supernatural history. But in 1842, the cave was used to house patients that were infected with tuberculosis. Honestly, this sounds like such a morbid and gloomy place to try to recover from a deadly disease. All of the patients got worse and they eventually died within the cave. Some say that if you listen closely, you can actually still hear coughing inside because it's believed that the patients still haunt this cave even to this day. Moving into number four, let's talk about the caves of death in Scotland. Judging by the name, it says it all. Well, you wouldn't catch me going anywhere near this place, but for people who are brave enough to go on a death expedition, I mean a cave exploration, these remote caves can be found in Northern Scotland. But be warned, archeologists who already have explored these caves, well, they have found some pretty horrifying things. Human sacrifices used to be conducted there, and there are even children's heads posted on poles. There are thousands of dead bodies inside, and people believe that this cave could have been used Used for some pretty intense supernatural rituals. Like I said before, I'm staying away from all the caves on this list, especially this one. The Moaning Cavern is up next at number three. This dark cave got its name, well, because you can hear a creepy moaning sound coming from inside of the cavern. This happens because the soul of the dead are screaming out in agonizing pain. Okay, not really, but the moans are from when the air circulates deep within the cave. But the sound is still pretty unsettling. If a scary moaning doesn't keep you away, maybe this will. 
Well, there are over 100 prehistoric bodies lurking at the bottom of the cave, and no one knows what they're doing there. Once you repel 165 feet into the cave, you will have to exit through an iron staircase, and you're gonna wanna watch your step because it's a long way down if you fall. Killing Cave takes our number two spot on this list. Okay, who the heck are naming these caves? Killing Cave? Well, if you ever visit Cambodia, you can go visit the Killing Caves for yourself for some reason. Well, not that you would really want to. I mean, is this really a big tourist attraction? Well, it might be because in the 70s, these caves used to be a place to torture and murder people, so there is history behind it. Well, the bones of the victims can still be found inside. Some of the skeletons have been crammed into display cases, and there are chicken wire cages that are filled up high with human skulls. Torture devices and victims' clothing are still scattered along the floor, and many other people were murdered there when they were pushed into the cave from the skylight above. So I'm thinking that a place with this much dark history can't be good for the soul. There is definitely an evil presence there, and it's also a pretty morbid place if you ask me. And just like that, topping our list, and at number one, we have the Bell Witch Cave. This property and cave was once owned by John Bell, and it's believed that the Bell Witch torments the Bell family until they mysteriously died. The family used to see strange animals around their property, and late at night, they would hear strange noises such as gnawing, choking, and dragging sounds. Violent attacks by unknown forces started happening to the family. The youngest daughter would wake up covered in scratches, and she'd be covered in bruises as well. Apparently, the Bell Witch lived inside of the caves, and anyone who stepped foot on the property will be paid a nasty visit by her.